the individuals in the legislature whenever I talk that I, I sort of, the sermons sort of come to mind. And if I was to deliver a sermon, today's topic would be, in this season, who are you flowing with? And let me tell you how that all came about. So many of you know, I think if you are trying to be in tune with God and what's happening, you know we are in the midst of just a horrible pandemic. You know we are in the midst of a lot of racial unjust. You know we're in the midst of a lot of businesses shutting down. And I think if you don't have a process or a method where you can plug in to God, that a lot of these things become overwhelming. A lot of these issues with, you know, learning what to do with your children now that schools are looking different. And so the gist of today's topic is that we are in the middle of a changing season. And I think whenever you look at whatever happens in stories of the Bible, when you look at history throughout America, throughout any country, you can always determine that there is change. And out of that change, like my pastor Julius Malone would say at New Testament Church, I look for God in everything. So let me tell you about how this topic came about. You know, I was... Um, you know, I've been in the middle of, I'm retiring from the state legislature, and I'm in the middle of doing a lot of other different things. And I had today a different topic for today. Um, but for whatever reason, there has been this season where God is talking to me, saying, this is the time, this is the things that I want you to talk about, particularly today. And you know how, you know, we as black folks, we are, whenever we, we, we see someone die or pass away, we always say death comes in threes. But I, 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 I'd submit to you all that when God is talking to you, that confirmation comes rather quickly. And so on the way here, one of the things that I, I decided to just turn on Joel Osteen and the first thing out of his mouth are, you are in a season of change. You are going to be blessed. God is taking you to new levels and I can see that, and that for me was confirmation, I believe, and after today's meditation this morning, that I'm supposed to talk about this topic today. And the question of who are you flowing with? Because in the middle of these things, if we don't have a connection with God, if we don't have, um, a, I think, a process or a, an agenda spend, to spend time, we will get overwhelmed and we will miss opportunities. Because out of chaos comes opportunities. And so as a lot of business people, myself included, have had to learn how to adapt and change with this current environment. The message now, I think, is very clear for many of us. Who are you flowing with? And I'll tell you how I got that. So... Uh, last yesterday, Saturday, I had a business meeting and I'm driving I'm about 45 minutes away from Milwaukee. And in my mind, in my spirit, I hear God saying, and whenever I say I hear God saying, I'm not talking about an audible voice. I hear God saying, you know what? Talk about the time you didn't listen to me. <laughs> and I'll give you the, 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 the example, the story. Before I do that, yesterday, uh, Sunday, I saw this meme or something, I don't know, on social media, and it said, I would rather flow with God than to be flowing with man. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a recurring theme. This is out of the chaos, out of all these items, out of all the things that are going on, there are opportunities, but the only way you will plug into those opportunities is if you are actually flowing with God, meaning if you are actually going with God. Now, for, for, for sake of explaining this, I always like to tell people, there are three places you can be with God. The worst place you can be is a front of, in front of them or ahead of them. Because if you are ahead of God, that means you're doing everything on your own. That means you are making the decisions. You're not plugging in. You're not looking for his counsel. That means you are out there just doing everything willy-nilly, and it's all on you. The second worst place to be, which is not as bad, is behind God. Meaning, if you are behind God, at the bare minimum, hopefully you are plugging in 
you are looking at his counsel, you are trying to follow, you're trying to get with him, you're trying to understand the movements that you need to make that he wants you to make. And so that's not as bad as the first position, but that's still not the greatest position. The greatest position, and we as human beings and children of God tend to underplay or under-exaggerate our role in this. The best place you can be with God when you're flowing with God is walking next to him side by side. The best place you can be with God, flowing with God, is when you and God are walking side by side. That means you hear him, you talk with him, you understand, y'all are at the boardroom table. Sometimes you may get upset and say a whole bunch of stupid stuff that he don't really pay attention to anyway. And so the best place to be is when you are walking side by side with God, because what it means is you are now walking in your, as Joel Osteen would put it, your destiny gene. You are now walking in this place or this position of authority as a child of God to move to a higher level. So with that explained, I, I'm driving and I hear God say, talk about the time where you decided to let the influence of man take over what I was lining up for you. So I'll give you this story. When I And many of you who know me may have heard this story before, but so I was first getting elected. It had to be around 2004 because I was sworn in the first Tuesday in January. I remember it like clockwork. Um, maybe a month before that, I'm at my parents' house and somehow I get a phone call. Um... And it's a lady from the White House. At this time, George Bush is the president. Now, mind you, I'm running for election. This is my first campaign to the Wisconsin State Assembly. And she's, 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 she's literally saying this to me. Jason, we have asked around, and your name has consistently popped up as one of these influencers, people, leadership, new young leaders, what have you. And we, would, we are inviting a group of you all to the White House to sit with the president. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, you know, this is, um, in my spirit, I'm like, look at God. You know, I'm giving, I'm giving y'all the, um, you know, my green leaf, <laughs> my green leaf voice. Look at God. You know, God is good. But my brain is saying, ooh, you're running for re-election. As a Democrat, you get this mysterious call to go to the White House with a Republican president. And in my mind, all I'm thinking is the, the junk I will catch if people find out. Totally missing the mark. Totally missing the idea that potentially God had me in a position for whatever reason to go to the White House as a young African-American man, maybe potentially talk about issues that we're going through, issues that we're dealing with, whether it be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, America. And yet, and I remember this to this day, I said no, or I didn't say no, I sort of blew them off. Because in my mind, the only thing that kept taking precedence was, well, you know, it's a bunch of people who, if they hear that you're going to the White House to sit with the Republican president, they're going to talk about you. They're going to, they're going to disown you. They're going to start bad-mouthing you. Now, mind you, and no offense, but none of them people did squat for me, right? And so the idea that I chose to follow man or man's thinking at that time put me out of the put me out of a situation of potentially going to what I feel now was a God ordained movement to go to the White House and have a conversation. And to this day, it bothers me because hindsight being twenty twenty, I look at it, and what bothers me is not why I not that I didn't go. What bothered me what bothers me is the reason why I didn't go, because at that point I had succumbed to fear. I had succumbed to the idea that man would somehow 
rule or have authority over my life. In essence, I gave up that position of power to flow with God and I chose man. And so I, he said, tell them about that because a lot of people during these chaotic times, you will inevitably have to choose either I'm going to flow with God or I'm going to flow with man. There is no, you, you cannot do both. And so what tends to happen is we forget that God has these seasons. And I'm going through it right now where you're firing on all cylinders with God. How many of you have ever been in a situation where whenever you have questions, biblical questions, right? Why did God do this? Why did God? And like the next day or later that day, that question is getting answered. There are seasons where God is saying, I want you to flow with me because there are some things we have to do. And there are positions and I am moving certain people. I'm doing some certain things. And you and I need to be on the same boat. I need you side by side walking with me in order to get this done the way I wanted to get it done. Your action or your involvement in that is you have to decide either I'm going to flow with God or I'm going to flow with man. What do I mean by when I say flow with man? Meaning that many of us will choose out of fear. We will choose out of lack of understanding. We will choose to flow with man because we haven't plugged in to God. We will choose because we haven't understood the seasons. We understood how God works with us individually. And for those old, for those of you listening, God does work. I believe this. God works with people in their in their way, right? He God works like God works with me differently and communicates with me differently than he does with my wife Latasha. Now, because we're both children of the Lord, I see how he works with her. Without a doubt, I see it. And oftentimes, I hear God saying, this is my daughter who I gave to you. That's why I'm so adamant about Proverbs 18, verse 22. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. And I can testify to you all that that is one of the most truest statements I've ever read, ever heard, and Actually, I am witnessing as a married man. That is true. I would encourage every brother, if you don't have a wife, get you one. <laughs> and so when we get into these positions or seasons, what happens is we end up making the wrong choice. We choose to flow with what man will say or man's influence. Because at the end of the day, when you operate out of doubt or fear, it it eventually means the conclusion you can come to is that you don't trust in God enough or you don't believe in God or you don't have faith that God can bring you to a place that he's bringing you to. And the reason why I say that is because I experienced that last night. And again, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. I'm talking to Latasha last night. You know, after I figured out the Lakers was going to win another championship, um, you know, I turned off the TV and we're just talking in the living room. And I told her because there are a lot of things that are happening to me right now. And there were people God gave me that said these things were going to happen. After I lost the comptroller's race, for whatever reason, it was a lot of people coming and saying, Jason, God has other stuff in store for that. Now I'm experiencing what God sent those people to tell me. And so where he's taking me to a higher level. And out of this chaos and turmoil, and this is why this is important, this is why you'd have to decide who you're flowing with, that during times of chaos and turmoil and unrest, there will be opportunities. In fact, you have to go through these kinds of times in order to be fully ready and prepared for the next level, to advance to the next level. That said, I'm sitting and I'm talking with my wife, and I was telling her how, you know, I'm getting appointed to boards, I'm sitting on boards, and I got it. LinkedIn message from the World Business Angel Investment Forum. I'll give y'all a story real quick. So I saw about, I learned about this group and I saw what they did years ago. And I'm, and I, and I said, God, I would love to be a part of that. That the international group, uh, you know, 92 countries, 1,482 delegates from around the world 
Um, and I'm sitting there like, this is exactly what I would love to do. International relations, international business, having these discussions with world leaders across the globe. This got my face written all over it. You know, this is me all day. Years pass and I see it, I'm following. And I get an email from the chairman. He says, Jason, would you like to be a senator uh, representing the U.S. at the World Business Angels Investment Forum? Here are the guidelines. This is what you have to do, and it's free. Now, I'm sitting here, and I'm going, what? <laughs> and my mind is blown. A couple of days ago, actually last night, here's the killer part. So I got that email a couple of days ago. Last night I'm working. I'm just going through some of my emails. Do you not know he had emailed me several times? Not necessarily to join. But he had personally emailed me just about updates and things. And it wasn't one of those, you know, just blanket emails. Just, you know, things that are happening in the U.S. And I don't recall receiving those emails. Like, I literally don't recall seeing those email, receiving those emails from him. But I'm sitting here going, this is crazy. But the idea that when you are flowing with God or flowing with man, you have to understand and appreciate the seasons because there will be seasons where God is moving you. And in order to move you, sometimes he has to move other people in position to get you where you need to be. Sometimes it's not always just about him moving you. It's about him moving a group of people. It's, a, it's about him allowing certain things to happen so you are in the best position. And so all of these things are happening, and I'm talking to Tasha last night, and I said, you know, I, I believe I'm qualified, I'm educated to do a lot of this stuff. But, and I said this to her, I said, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say there is some thoughts in my mind, are you ready for all this kind of stuff? Are you ready? In essence, are you ready for the, these kinds of levels? Are you ready to be a president or a CEO of an organization that manages you know, a hundred million dollars. Are you ready to, you know, are you ready to be in those kinds of situations of leadership? And my wife was like, yeah. And we were talking and Tasha said to me, she said, Jason, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Blew me away. Blew me away. And it is, it is that that moment I remembered God said, this is my daughter. Who I'm giving to you and she and my wife is fine and beautiful but there are moments where I'm like girl you look good right now and that was one of those moments because it was what she said and I'll repeat because I think a lot of us miss this in these times of chaos and turmoil in these times where you're wondering okay where am I going to go what am I going to do I need to reinvent myself I need to get a whole new system in place because 2020 has been the year where God has came and said, yeah, y'all, we doing this different. And so when she said, Jason, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. And she went on to say, when God is moving you and he's bringing you to a position, you don't have to worry about being an expert because he will deliver you, he will train you, he will equip you, he will empower you to have, to know, and to deliver all the things you need to do and know when he calls you to that position. And immediately, it was like a sense of calm and peace because, you know, quite honestly, as a business person, I forgot that. As a heavenly kingdom business person, those are some of those things that you forget. And so when she said that, it just reassured me. And the message that I wanted to give to many of you today is that when you decide to flow with God, yes, there will be times where, you, and this is where usually I tell people you need to start getting prepared to do your financial recap. You need to start be beginning to prepare how you're going to go into 2021. 
You know, you have Thanksgiving, Christmas, you have all these things coming up. What's the game plan? You know, how are you in 2020 reinventing yourself? Are you reinventing yourself? Well, when you flow with God, all these things tend to naturally come up because you understand that there's a season for change and you need to understand what season are you in. Are you in the planting season? Are you in the harvesting season? Are you in the season where you're taking care of things? Are you in a season where, you know what, it's time to sit down, plan, and reevaluate? And so, or are you in the season where it's time for you to shut up, be quiet, sit down, and just connect? And that's a season that I think a lot of us, we, we tend to, we, 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 we tend not to appreciate fully because that's a hard season. I mean, let's be clear. When you are in a season where God wants you to simply give thanks, talk to him, um, you know, just con talk to yourself. When you are in that season where you feel like, okay, God, where are you? That's a hard season to be in. I mean, let's not, let's not, let's, let's not act like that's an easy season. But that season prepares you to stay focused and connect. And this is why it's vitally important to decide who are you flowing with in this season. 2020 has, 2020 has been one of the, you know, most chaotic years, most different years ever. And I think the question becomes, you know, as I hear God saying, Jason, People have to decide, are you going to flow with me so we can navigate through all these things and we can all come out better? Or are you going to continue to flow with man, stay in the negativity, stay in all the turmoil, stay in all the chaos? And then after this, when it's time to, when we move to a different season, nothing for you has changed. And so those, those seasons in deciding on who you're going to flow with becomes vitally important, particularly during seasons where, listen, none of this stuff looks like it's going right. That's the time where you need to be plugged in. I wonder where God is. That's the time you need to be sitting down praying consistently. You know, why is God doing this? That's the time where you need to be in your word, consistently reprogramming uh, your subconscious to navigate to the words and wisdom of God automatically. That's a time where you have to, you know, you have to limit or watch your intake of negative news, negative people, negative occurrences. Not that you can't pay attention to it, not that you shouldn't be aware of it, but 2020 has told us, if anything, you need to be plugged into God and decide you're going to flow with God because there's so much happening that if you don't, you may miss opportunities because when you're not flowing with God, you're flowing with man. And so that's what I wanted to touch, to touch on, to talk about, because it's vitally important that we really begin to understand the seasons and understand and make the decision that I'm either going to flow with man or I'm going to flow with God. You cannot have it both ways. When you flow with God, you have the peace that surpasses all understanding. You have time to do a game plan. You have time to connect. You have time to plan and prepare for where God is taking you. And that's always to the next level. You've been listening to Jason Fields. You've listened to The Financial Promise, 30 Minutes of Power with Jason Fields. See you all next week.